hello and welcome back. It's been a very long time. Um, I've just been busier than I could ever have imagined myself being. But that's not important. I'm not going to mess around today. I'm just going to get straight into the topic, which is finishing my Rubric Marines kill team, which I talked about in a previous video. If you would like me to talk over the data cards that which I have made into like a custom spreadsheet, leave a comment and I'll go through the team as it works and I'll maybe even go through my other kill teams as well. But for now, I'm just going to get straight into going through the process of finishing these Marines and you can let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much to everybody who's stuck with me recently and been patient and waiting for this video. Thank you to everyone who's also joined me in the interim. So yeah, as an opening note, just stick around to the end to see why I use Magnetizga by Legio Symphonica here. Something I'm very, 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 very big fan of. And I'm hoping that you'll see the payoff the same way that I felt whenever I was making the video. But whenever I was going with the color scheme for these guys, I didn't want to overcomplicate things. So I basically did the most complicated or the most technical part was shading underneath the blue with a little bit of purple. All the colors are on screen. Shading underneath the blue, which was like a base coat, a very dark base coat, so that I could then highlight on top and create a nice sort of glow or sort of shining um, spectral effect on the armor. And basically I just went around base coating everything on top of the gold after that. The the white's really simple, I just used seraphim sepia to tone them down into cloth after that, there wasn't really very much going on there. And as I'm saying, there wasn't really any need to overcomplicate this, so I just went with the easiest option when it came to things like filling in uh, cloths and stuff because the detail in the armor was enough to bring out anything else I needed. And once I had the under sort of purple coming at it from a stippled low angle to create a bit of shadow, I went from a higher angle with blue again just to sort of fill in the main color rather than let the purple take control of the, the, the appearance of things. And from there it was just a matter of layering blues on top of that to get a nice kind of armor reflection effect. And once I got the lighter blues involved, you can really see how that came into effect. I'm really, really happy with once I got the shading into, once I used the shade paint to sort of tone it all down and blend it together, I got a really, really nice effect on the armor, which you'll see over the course of this as it sort of unfolds. But once I, you can see here, the blue is actually starting to come into play as I toned up the gold. Obviously, the stippling covers up a lot of the armor edges and the gold parts, so I had to redo that. And um, I used a few different effects to try and get the gold back in order again, using sponges and different kinds of highlights and things like that, but you'll see that as it unfolds. And Whenever we moved on to the more detailed parts, it was into my least favorite parts of these models, which was filling in the yellow, which there was no way out of, I was only going to be able to do that, and it was very frustrating, the little runnels in the armor that sort of absorbed the paint if it was anyway thinned. And at this point, they started to look like Rubric Marines, which I was really pleased with. They, they actually looked like what they're supposed to look like. Um, I was worried that they would be a little bit disappointing, but from here it was basically just a chance for a matter of detailing things, which didn't take too much. Like I said, I was using some sponging just to get a little bit of tone in the gold, and after that it was basically just filling in the gaps when it came to dry brushing a glow, and filling in sort of just highlight and contrast colors, like a little bit of red to bring out something different from the blue and gold and the blue and gold everywhere on the model. Um, the flames effect, I added a little bit of shadow by putting in some green contrast paint, which you can see here. I layered it, then I dry brushed a, a lighter layer, then I put on the contrast paint, and then I, I dry brushed it and used a couple more technical paints just to get that real vibrant green, which again, like the red in some of the, the uh, models, stands out against the blue and the gold. You can see if, if we compare some of the different models together, some of them have both, but most of them have one or the other, either green or red as an accent color. The green in these sort of flame or, or psychic kind of models brings out something a little bit different, and then the red in the, in the gunners kind of highlights something a little bit more off to one side. So it kind of creates a little bit of a divide between the two major types of unit in this, in this kill team, which I think looks really, really good, but I would love to hear what you think of how I've used contrast to try and create a bit of interest in these models. And once I had the major kind of details down, I went back to the blue armor and used a blue shade just to try and blend it all together and cover up a little bit of the rougher edges and stuff like that. And then again, it was just tidying up more details, more edges, more goals and things just to bring out just the, the varying levels of color. I didn't want the same gold across everything, so the armor was very, very uniform gold. So I put in a slightly duller one on the guns and stuff just to make sure things looked a little bit different when, whenever your eye moved across the models. And then I get into probably my favorite part of how the, these 
bottles up here, and you'll see this at the end, it was a green glow from anything psychic or anything sort of warp flame or witch fire related. And I think that it turned out quite well, really. With all of the details and the major kind of glow and the effects and the contrasts and everything done, I just basically moved on to basing. Didn't want to spend any longer than I needed to on these, because while I do want to get kind of attached to these models, I don't want to spend like cabinet quality time on them. I wanted to get them done so I could play them. I had the data cards ready and I was kind of raring to get them on the tabletop. And so I highlighted the leader, the leader sort of um, the sorcerer with gold on his base rather than black, just to make him stand out a little bit. But everything else was just a really simple technical paint with some grass tufts from Army Painter attached to the bases. But you can sort of see that some of the gold or some of the green glow appearing here, which is nice to see on camera. It's nice to see that the glow shows even when I'm not trying to highlight it like I will later on. But then as you see as well, the bases are really, really simple, but it helps bring them to life a little bit. And then the last thing I did was make sure that all the eyes of these marines were black. I normally paint eye colors onto lenses, but because these are rubric marines with no soles and nothing living inside the armor, I just wanted to go with a plain black eye lens to make it look like, despite all this extra color going on, there's nothing inside that armor. And I think I pulled that off, I think it looks quite spooky, um, just a little bit unsettling, because there's the eyes are where you're drawn to, but there's nothing there. Then to finalize everything, it's just a simple coat of Storm Shield varnish, just to protect the paint, because these are tabletop models, I'm going to be touching and moving them, I don't want the paint to wear down in those higher areas. So just make sure they're all nice and sealed in, and the color's protected, and it stays there. And like always with Kill Teams, I built my own little carry box, with a little bit of a <laughs> childish stylized design on it, and all the metal. The models fit in really comfortably, and it looks, it, it just looks a bit more unique than the kind of carrying them in a box or a bag or anything like that. And it, it sort of gives them, it, it, it respects the sort of personality those models have. And with all the work done, there's only one thing left to do. And leave me a comment with what you think.